Mostly Harmless by Douglas Adams. Chapter 23. The news networks don't like this sort of thing. They regard it as a waste. An incontrovertible spaceship arrives out of Norway in the middle of London and it is sensational news of the highest magnitude. Another completely different one arrives three and a half hours later and somehow it isn't. Another spacecraft, said the headlines and newsstand billboards. This one's pink. A couple of months later, they could have had made a lot more of it. The third spacecraft, half an hour after that, the little forber Thrundy runabout, only made it onto the local news. Ford and Arthur had come screaming down out of the stratosphere and parked neatly on Portland Place. It was just after 6.30 in the evening and there were spaces free. They mingled briefly with the crowd that gathered round to Orgel, then said loudly that if no one else was going to call the police, they would, and made good their escape. Home, said Arthur, a husky tone creeping into his voice as he gazed misty-eyed around him. Oh, don't get maudlin on me, snapped Ford. We have to find your daughter, and we have to find that bird thing. How, said Arthur, this is a planet of five and a half billion people, and... Yeah, said Ford. But only one of them has just arrived from outer space in a large silver spaceship accompanied by a mechanical bird. I suggest we just find a television and something to drink while we watch it. We need some serious room service. They checked into a large two-bedroom suite at the Langham. Mysteriously, Ford's dino charge card, issued on a planet over 5,000 light-years away, seemed to present the hotel's computer with no problems. Ford hit the fawn straight away, while Arthur attempted to locate the television. OK, said Ford. I want to order up some margaritas, please. A couple of pitchers, a couple of chef salads. And please, as much far gras as you've got. And also, uh, London Zoo. She's on the news, shouted Arthur from the next room. That's what I said, said Ford into the phone. London Zoo, just charge it to the room. She's... Good God, shouted Arthur. Do you know who she's being interviewed by? Are you having difficulty understanding the English language? Continued Ford. It's the zoo just up the road from here. I don't care if it's closed this evening. I don't want to buy a ticket. I just want to buy the zoo. I don't care if you're busy. This is room service. I'm in a room and I want some service. Got a piece of paper. OK. Here's what I want you to do. All the animals that can be safely returned to the wild. Return them. Set up some good teams of people to monitor their progress in the wild. See that they're doing okay. It's Trillian, shouted Arthur. Or is it a... God, I can't stand all this parallel universe stuff. So bloody confusing. Seems to be a different Trillian. It's Trisha McMillan, which is what Trillian used to be called before... uh, Why don't you come and watch and see if you reckon figuring out... Just come and see if you can figure it out. Just a second... Ford shouted, and returned to his negotiations with room service. Then we'll need some natural reserves for the animals that can't hack it in the wild, he said. Set up a team to work out the best places to do that. Might need to buy somewhere like Zaire, maybe some islands, Madagascar, Baffin, Sumatra, those kinds of places. We'll need a wide variety of habitats. Look, I don't see why you're seeing this as a problem. Learn to delegate. Hire whoever you want. Get on to it. I think you'll find my credit is good. And blue cheese dressing on the salad. <laughs> Thank you. He put the fawn down and went through to Arthur, who was sitting on the edge of his bed watching television. I ordered us some foie gras, said Ford. What? said Arthur, whose attention was entirely focused on the television. I said I ordered us some foie gras. Oh, said Arthur vaguely. Um, I always feel a bit bad about foie gras. A bit cruel to the geese, isn't it? Fuck em said Ford, slumping onto the bed. You can't care about every damn thing. Well, that's all very well and good for you to say, but... Drop it, said Ford. If you don't like it, I'll have yours. What's happening? Chaos, said Arthur. Complete chaos. Random keeps on screaming at Trillian, or Trisha, or whoever she is, that she abandoned her and then demanding to go to a good nightclub. Trisha's broken down in tears and say she's never even met Random, let alone given birth to her. Then she suddenly started howling about someone called Rupert and said that he'd lost his mind or something. I don't quite follow that bit, to be honest. Then Random starts throwing stuff and they've cut to a commercial break while they try and sort it all out. Ah, they've just cut back to the studio. (laughs) Shut up and watch. 
a rather shaken anchorman appeared on the screen and apologised to viewers for the disruption of the previous item. He said he didn't have any very clear news to report, only that the mysterious girl, who called herself Random Frequent Flyer Dent, had left the studio to, er, uh, rest. Trisha McMillan would be, he hoped, back tomorrow. Meanwhile, fresh reports of UFO activity were coming in. Ford leapt up off the bed, grabbed the nearest phone and jabbed at a number. Concierge, you want to own the hotel? It's yours if you can find out for me in five minutes which clubs Trisha McMillan belongs to. Just charge the whole thing to this room. 